What's at stake here? A chance to go to Atlanta. The possibility of a third consecutive BCS appearance. They're going to try a field goal. 57 yards for the win. On the way. No, returned by Chris Davis. Davis goes left. Davis gets a block. Chris Davis, touchdown and answered prayer. Jalen Hurts, he'll keep it. Carry on Johnson with a convoy in front. Harris up the middle. He's going to go. Slate. Yes. Scarborough is going to walk in. Touchdown, Auburn. There's no words that really describe the hate that there is between Auburn and Alabama. There's a tremendous bragging right pride that is really beyond description. It's electric. Hairs on the back of your neck are standing up. It's something that you, you'll remember for the rest of your life. You have to experience it to truly understand it. It's the best rivalry in college football. And for the 82nd time, it is the Iron Bowl from Auburn, Alabama. The Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us to Jordan Hare Stadium. And the six ranked Auburn Tigers on their home field against the top team in the land, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. You take a look at the West standings in the SEC, it says it all. Alabama on top, perfect at 7-0. Auburn right there at 6-1. Can they pull a surprise like they did four years ago? The college football playoff picture looks like this. Miami has lost now. You take a look at the rest for Auburn and Alabama. A trip to Mercedes-Benz Stadium and a matchup with Georgia is in store for the winner today. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Plains. I'm Brad Nussler. When you say Iron Bowl, it should be enough. When you think about two teams that are both ranked in the top ten for only the eighth time in the storied history, and then it's for a play-in to play the Georgia Bulldogs next Saturday in Atlanta. That says it all. There's some eerie similarities to four years ago. A quarterback that had a number one ranked team. A quarterback on the other side that led a comeback after a loss to LSU. Two running backs with the same numbers and the same impact. And then the unthinkable, unbelievable that Byrne called so beautifully on the 109-yard run back for a miracle victory for Auburn. My partner Gary Danielson four weeks ago said on the air that Auburn, a two-loss team, had a chance to get in the college football playoff. I thought you had lost your mind. Yeah. You were right. Well, you know, there wasn't a lot of believers, you know, after that LSU game. And until that Georgia game, were you believing after the Georgia game? Yes, I did. And I think all of the Auburn fans were believing after the Gordon, uh, Georgia game. They played almost a perfect football game. And I think to beat Alabama, they're going to have to do it the same way. And to do that, they got to ride their star. From Al Dean to all in, Alley's with Nick Saban moments ago. Coach, linebackers Christian Miller, Terrell Lewis, Mac Wilson, they're available but not 100%. How does that affect your ability to stop this fast Auburn offense? Look, we're going to have everybody to stop Auburn's offense. It ain't going to be about those three guys. It's going to be about everybody on our team being all in, ready to play. I'm proud of this team for what they've given themselves an opportunity, but we got to be able to finish. It's the Iron Bowl. Everything can and has happened in this game. What makes this rivalry so unpredictable every year? I don't know. I guess it's the emotion of the game. That's why you got to channel your emotions in the right direction. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. I think everybody in this whole stadium feels the exact same way. Uh, Alabama leads the series 45 wins, 35 losses, and a tie. Allie made her way across the field to Gus Malzahn of the Auburn Tigers. Coach, this is only the second time in history that this game has decided who goes to Atlanta next week. Why will it be Auburn? It's good as it gets right now. We played our best game against the number one team in the country two weeks ago. We need to do the same thing tonight. Your quarterback, Jared Stidham, has never experienced this unique environment. What have you told him about the Iron Bowl and this Alabama defense? Yeah, I told him just to do his thing. Play his game. He's played very well. He's gotten better each week, and I expect him to play well today. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. A little bit different, though. Gus Malzahn wants to write it wide open, and he's looking for big plays. When you talk to Nick Saban, he says it's fundamentals, do your job. Just a little different take. First meeting was in 1893 at Birmingham's Lakeview Park. This venue's a little bit bigger. Bama won the toss, deferred. 
J.K. Scott will tee it up. Martin and Igbenagi back deep for the Tigers. Iron Bowl number 82 is underway. Igbenagi is going to take a knee, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Second down and nine. Play fake. Stidham double clutches, throws it out to Davis. Davis broke the tackle, and he got a first down. Well, Stidham had to double clutch. The blitz was coming off the edge from Hootie Jones, number six. If he'd have thrown it on his first try, it would have been knocked down. Watch, he sees Hootie Jones coming. He delays, lets Hootie come down. Trot out to the top of your screen. Here comes a blitz. Hertz is just going to take off on his own. I don't know. Close, but I don't think he got it. I don't think he did. But it's in that in-between part of the field. Obviously, no field goal. Do you punt it early in the game? I'd be punting, and I know that. So a little more room to breathe for the Tigers. Second down and five. Straight up the middle, and carry on Johnson's into the second here. First down out of the 26. But Levi Wallace on that play. Wallace, a great story, a former walk-on. And now a great corner. 39 for Stidham. Down the middle, and this one's a strike, and this time he hangs on. Nate Craig Myers might have dropped the last one, but not this one. Oh, man. Great middle throw of the field. I'll tell you that. If you like replays, you're just going to have to be patient. First down at the Alabama 48. Quick throw out to Slayton. And Slayton kept his footing somehow. Wow! I thought we all thought he was out of bounds. I thought his left foot was out of bounds when he got thrown out. His toe was in. I don't think his heel ever came down. Unbelievable. Did it? Yes, great balance. Now they go the other way. Three, two receivers to get out of bounds on that one to get to the sideline on the substitution. Craig Myers in motion toward the ball. Stidham comes back this way to carry on Johnson. He's got the first down inside the 15. Well, I'll tell you, Chip Lindsay, the offensive coordinator for Auburn, has the whole personnel. Brad, I was here three weeks ago. And I saw Kerry on Johnson do the Tim Tebow jump pass from the Wildcat in this position. That's the spot he's in right now. Third down and two. Kerry on. There's the jump pass. Gary Cole. Touchdown. See if Jalen Hurts and Alabama can answer now from the 25. Bo Scarborough in the backfield with Hurts. And it's a quarterback draw for Hurts. Nothing doing. Might have lost a half yard. Dontavis Russell was the first guy there. And that's the problem with this Auburn defensive line for Alabama to handle. This time it was Russell, number 95. He Inside beats Hassenauer, but there's four of them, and you don't know which guy's going to make the big play. You Did weeks they ago. ever? Did they ever? Hurts, plenty of time. He's going to go long. Got a man out there. Uh, Ridley incomplete. There comes the fly. Absolutely. You know, in college football, this makes sense. Okay, it's a 15-yard play. In the NFL, obviously, on interference That's like this, it's going to be the right there. You can Second down and 27. Now can that defensive line dominate? Just a four-man rush, and they're bringing the heat. They did. And Hurts lost the ball, and Auburn's got it. Trey Williams on top of it. They did dominate. Alabama off 
offense, their first team offense all season. I think it was Derek Brown that knocked the ball away. It was Jeff Holland that flushed him out and Trey Williams who ended up with the ball. Jeff Holland flushes Hurts. Big play by Derek Brown. The turnover. Oh, they went sugar huddle. They always do something funny out of that. Stidham's going to whip it out. Carry on Johnson. Got 10 or 11. Last rush here. Tigers line up in a hurry. On third and five. Stidham rolling left. Going that way. First down. And it's Davis. That'll be a single season record receiving. That's Hastings emotion there. And drop the ball. Let's see who's on it. Alabama might have it. Wow. They do. Deron Payne. It's about the first thing that's gone wrong for Auburn all day. I think Jared Stidham should have just fell on this instead of trying to save the play. Fall on it. You got three points. When he does it, he tries to pick it up and then the guard in the game. Third and five. Ridley in motion toward the ball and now back to the left. And Hertz is looking that way. Flushed out of the pocket. Can he find an open man? Gonna go deep down the sideline and incomplete. Foster was the closest receiver. I'll tell you, they flushing them again. Boy, Jeremy Pruitt was aggressive. He blitzed off the slot again. Stidham again. In trouble. And he's going to take off on his own. Oh. Gets it across the 25 to the 27. Dylan Moses, a freshman linebacker, made a stop. I think the umpire got in the middle of that play at the end of it. Stidham gets it again, where it's third and six. And make if you're going to throw the ball, don't you want to throw early? Yeah. Oh, well, they're going to drop gimmick, back. Gimmick. Now they're thinking about it. And the jump ball in the end zone. Won by Alabama. Jerry Judy. Touchdown. You could feel it. Hurts to Judy, 36 yards, touchdown. Jeremiah Dinson. A little bit of an audible there from Jalen Hurts. From his own goal line. Deep sideline to Ridley. Couldn't hang on. Alabama tried a rub play when you pick a player this time Alabama tried to rub Ridley open the ball to start the second half they want to finish off this half blitz coming on second and six did him going deep man's there We're gonna have a flag no uh, Slayton so. got tangled up back there with Levi Wallace but no penalty I thought Slayton misjudged this he knew he had the defender on his hip and I don't know if there was a tuck by the Alabama by Levi Wallace. Yes, there was. He tucked his arm, but I thought Slayton was slowing down as well. I mean, I've been here a while. I get it. But I think that's a good no call. So it brings up third down. All right, blitz. Over the middle. On the run. Ryan Davis to the 22. Wow. Jeremy Pruitt on third and five. Sends the high. For a minute. 33 yard attempt. He's had two blocked this year. They try to give Auburn the lead back from 33 yards. Kick is perfect. Carlson got hit after he, he made the kick there. Tony Brown came across the edge. Coach, what will it take to get off to a better start offensively in the second half? Talk about our offense? Yes. Well, you know, we stopped ourselves the first couple times we had the ball with the penalty and, you know, fourth and short. But, you know, the big difference in the game to me is third down. We're not getting off the field on third down on defense. We're not converting third downs on offense. 
so we're not keeping the ball to extend drive. How do you make things more difficult for Jared Stidham in the pocket? Well, I, I can't hear what you're asking. How do you make things more difficult for Jared Stidham in the pocket? He's having a good first half. Yeah, on third down because we're, we're getting pressure on him. He's had to scramble a couple times. We've, we've got good pressure on him, but we're not doing a good job of covering him. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. As we welcome you to the booth, Garrett, good. I was facing that way. I know, but we're, we're doing, doing it this way. Right? It this way. <laughs> hey, 128 yards offense for Alabama. Auburn's defense came to play, didn't they? You know, they did. And, and, and I thought in the game, there was times when the Auburn defense was dominating the times they did dominate with the pass rush. But you know what stands out to me is the Alabama running backs. Jalen Hurts is the leading carrier in this game. The running backs, Scarborough, Harris, Jacobs. The three of them are seven for 27. Yeah, he was. Man, he was looked like he was going to go out and play golf today <laughs> instead of Alabama's defense. Damian Harris, this time on the ground, and he's still on his feet in the Auburn territory. That's the biggest play of the day for Alabama, with the exception of that 36-yard touchdown pass and in the first Jeff half. Jeff Holland, number two, Auburn, he had 17 carries for 90 yards. Here he comes again, and there he goes again. Touchdown, Alabama. Scarborough from 21 yards out, and just like that, Alabama regains the lead. And it was at halftime a year ago that Nick... Necessarily a thousand percent healthy back in there. He's been banged up a little bit the last couple weeks as well. Yeah, they're both... Wilson's right there at top of the screen. Here they come after Stidham. Over the middle on a late throw, got it to Hastings. And Hastings... Gets it to the 48-yard line. Mac Wilson missed Hastings. If Bugs would have hustled, though, he could have got off. He kind of uh, dogged it off the field. First and five. Quick throw out to Davis. Puts the brakes on and gets a first down. Put his hand down to keep his balance and picks up the first down. This is not a chip shot, even for Carlson. 44-yard attempts. And a kick on the way. And good. I guess it was a chip shot for him. Well, he always talks about we, and that means his holder, Tyler Stovall. He says, we made that one. He and his holder. You're Kevin Steele and Gus Malls on. You're depending on your defensive line. Hurts going to throw it out in the flat to Scarborough. And Roberts, what a, what a tackle. Can't do it any better than that. You know, when we were talking to defensive coordinator Kevin Steele, we were singing the praises of Trey Matthews. And he said, don't sleep on Steve. They've given up eight touchdowns in power foot five football. This is nine. They've given up nine. They're still defensively very strong. A little over 10 points a game as tops in the country defensively for Alabama. Still on third down. Crossing route, Ryan Davis on the run. Davis cuts outside. He's all the way down to the 40-yard line. Yeah, Levi Wallace again. Davis just a little bit too quick for him. Comes in. He's been fighting. Actually, he was an important adjustment for this Auburn offense when he was inserted after game two, though. Third down at seven. Stidham looking for his 20th completion of the game to pick up a first down. If he gets a chance to throw... Now he's going to run with it. Diving. Did he get it? He did. Well, Tony Brown, number two, rushed off the slot. He did not make the play, but he ended up flushing Stidham out of the pocket. Down at seven. Stidham, quarterback draw this time. Got a big hole in the middle of the field. Stood him down to the 12. Number 77, Markel Harrell. Number is the offensive lineman that makes the move and comes in on Rashawn Evans. Watch this. At the 10 yard line. Stove's going to get it on an end around. Got a blocker in front. Diving down around the four yard line. Are they going to say he's out? Nope, at a four. I think Chandler take it here. Carry on Johnson in the Wildcat. 
He will keep it. Hesitates, waits for his blockers, and heads to the corner. He's not in, but he's got it first and goal. A big tackle by Ronnie Harrison that time to save a touchdown. And Carry on holding his shoulder a little bit. Is. Shoulder. First and goal. He stays in there. And he gets in there. Touchdown, Auburn. Did Darius James pull him in? Number 78. Let's watch James right here to see if he isn't the one that helps the injured carry on Johnson get in the, yeah. He is blocking Ronnie Harrison right there. But as he stretches the ball out, he makes himself vulnerable to the hit from Ronnie Harrison. As he stretches his left arm out, that allows that helmet to go right in that area. If he had ducked it down, I think Kerryon Johnson thought he was going to be able to lay out and score the touchdown. That could be a huge play with three minutes to go. To them today, even when they've been deep in his own end zone. This line drive is bobbled a little bit by Diggs. And now Trayvon Diggs weaving his way through traffic. Diggs across the 30, down the near sideline. Trayvon Diggs all the way to the 40 of Auburn. And I think Josh Jacobs helped him miss, but again. Next Saturday, to whoever survives this one. Hurts. The throw on the run. Got a man out there. Incomplete. Ridley, the intended receiver. Here comes the flag on Carlton Davis. I think Carlton Davis is going to be. Hurts. Holland giving chase. He's just got to get rid of it. Hey, how smart Holland that time. He was not too aggressive on Hurts. He knew what was in front of him. If he went for a fast tackle on that play. Ridley now goes in motion into a slot. Hurts got away from pressure. Finally throws back across his body. Jump ball tipped. Was it caught? Henches, did he get it? Touchdown. Holy cow. Well, first of all, this ball should have never been thrown. I don't see no catch. No. Jalen Hurts is very fortunate that this ball didn't get intercepted. And it bounced off the ground. Previous play is under further review. This will be a 35-yard attempt to try to cut the lead to three. Bobbled snap. Now J.K. Scott trying to throw it. Got it to Papanastas, but Auburn takes over. Saban was one of the last coaches that used his quarterback to be a holder. He trusted old school that his backup quarterback should be the holder. And on this one, the punter, J.K. Scott. Second down and seven. Davis in motion. Stidham rolling right, firing. And it's complete to Davis. First down. Holy cow, what a throw. I think it's a first down. They were able to match up Ryan Davis on Ronnie Harrison, the strong safety. But just as Harris, Harrison was trying to come out of his break, that ball was on the way, and I thought the arm was underneath it. What a catch. What a throw. I called for the Alabama game where they didn't pick up a third down conversion. Yeah, exactly. Auburn's got it right now with the lead and carry on Johnson. Even though he's banged up, he's still out there wheeling it. That's going to put him over 100, I think. They would need him in the fourth quarter. Stidham's out there at the top of your screen as a wide receiver right now. Davis in motion. And here comes a flea flicker as Stidham's got time. He's going to go back to Davis. Oh, what a move by Davis. 
Fields inside the 30, down to the 20 yard line. You talk about pulling out the offensive stops. Well, it was a trick formation. Alabama should have been ready for it. When, Al- when Auburn huddles up differently, they usually come out on balance. They were on balance. And what a nice play off of the Wildcat reverse throwback and then juke move at the end of it. That is uh, everything on one play, right? And a 25-yard pickup to the 20-yard line of Alabama. His hands and make the people miss. As we said earlier in the first quarter already, he went over the single-season mark of receptions in Auburn. Record books and now still in the quarterback. And then he ends on touchdown. right there for this Auburn football team. Just about everything you can have. Darius Slayton got a key block on Mika Fitzpatrick to allow Stidham to get into the end zone. So you know, Alabama gets the kickoff with great field position. They cannot take advantage of no points on the board. It's Rudy Auburn. Jones that's down right now. Uh, it's Tony Jones. Auburn gets good for the field position. They make it count. And now it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Our Geico Game Recap. Jalen Hurts today early on the ground. He hurt the Auburn defense not so much in this second half. And he can hurt you through the air, too. Biggest play of the day, 36-yard touchdown. On a jump ball to Judy back there. That had Alabama in front. Bo Scarborough got in the act, opening drive of the third quarter. He scored to give Alabama the lead again. But huge day for Kerryon Johnson, whether it be through the air or on the ground, even when he's been banged up. That touchdown gave Auburn the lead back. And then the quarterback in his first year in the Plains becoming a hero here in his first game in an Iron Bowl. 16-yard touchdown run by Stidham. That's where we stand. Carry on Johnson and Davis go out to the right. Stidham in the shotgun from the three on the two point conversion. Look at this. And now they're going to put a tackle over there. Austin Golston. The tight end moving everybody on the move. Stidham lofts it away incomplete. Two for two on third downs this drive. They need another one here. They've got to get to the 29. The ball is loose. They cover it up, but it's back at the 38-yard line. Well, what was all that? That was very odd. First, the running back goes up and taps the center prior, and I don't think Jalen Hurts was ready for the snap. It's fourth down. Well, you can't hide here. And what do you do if you're Auburn? Oh, he did it again. And now Hurts has to cover it again. He couldn't even pick it up and try to do something with it. Auburn takes over on downs back at the 40. or the guard who's making the call again sees Josh Jacobs clapping his no it's Bo Scarborough. Bo Scarborough both times comes up he taps the center Bradley looks up Bozeman looks up left guard says snap it Jalen Jalen's got his hands on his yes. hips and now on fourth down it's worse okay yeah this is Scarborough clapping his hands and Bozeman hears the clap and snaps the ball but I think Alabama's gonna get bailed out here They get a snap clean here to Hertz, and can he pick up three yards? Or Damian Harris, maybe. Hertz will try to do it with his arm. Lobs one's got it complete. Not going to get there, though. Robert Foster. Foster's brought down a yard shot. Well, that's a tough throw if you're a quarterback making a two-yard throw in this situation with all of these athletes on the field for Auburn. You throw a ball underneath like this. Auburn is playing zone. They're letting everything.
thing happened in front of him, and Foster, if he would have turned up one second earlier, might have had a chance, but Carlton Davis makes the tackle, and it's a sure tackle. Doesn't Foster have to get a little bit deeper on the route, though? Well, you would think. I mean, you're right. I mean... On second down and 13. Yeah, Nick Saban has to start thinking, when do I start using my timeouts? He has three. Alabama thinking about a blitz. And they're going to come with it. And Martin squirts through his first carry, and he takes it out to the 49. So I asked Cam Martin, excuse me, I asked Gus Miles on about Cam Martin, and he said, we trust him. Well, they're going to have to now as Nick Saban takes a timeout. They get a head start on Holland and jumped early. Second and 15. There'll be three minutes left in the game during this play. Hurts. Trying to scan the field, running out of time again. Can't get rid of it, and down he goes. And it's Cole who got to him again. I'll tell you, Nick Coe was so tired, I don't think he really wanted to run after him. But then he got the opportunity because Marlon Davidson forced him to it, and Nick Saban is going to have to take a timeout here and let his team rest on offense. That's their last one, though. And they've got to get it all the way down to the 20-yard line when we come back for a first down. Steps up. Might have been over the line of scrimmage. Pass is incomplete anyway. Flags down. I think he crossed the line of scrimmage. It's not going to matter. How about that? Let's take a look at the GMC game changers. Not just one, we got two for you. And why not? Carry on Johnson did a little bit of everything today. From the Wildcat with a jump pass. To taking a handoff from a yard out when his shoulder was hurt already. And then Jared Stidham. How good has he been in his first Iron Bowl ever? Both with his legs, some tough runs, including that 16-yarder for a touchdown. And he whipped it around the yard today, too, with that right arm. And the party is 14 seconds away. It's all Arkansas. What do you do now? <laughs> it's gonna be the last play, barring a penalty. The throw completed. Might end up being a touchdown. Not going to get there. Cam Sims has the clocks hit zero. And a double shower for Gus Malzahn. And they're coming out of the stands at Jordan Hare. His second win against Alabama in his stay here on the Plains, and it's a huge one. The winning coach is with Allie. Coach, for the second time in three weeks, you've taken out the number one team in the country on your home field. How can you describe the level yeah, of excitement and pride yeah, right now? It's unbelievable. I'm so proud of our team. It's so hard to do. Two out of three weeks, play the number one team and get up again. Our guys did it. We beat them handily. What has clicked for this Auburn team in the second half? Well, we're just playing good football. Very few teams this time of year playing their best football. We're one of them. You were worried about third downs. Two for ten isn't so bad. Were you impressed with the defense today? Yeah, we were 0 for last year and just turned around on third down and uh, couldn't be happier. It's a big moment for us. We're on our way. You told Jared Sidham before the game, just be you. How impressive was your quarterback yeah, he, today? He made plays with his feet, didn't he? And uh, made some great throws. So proud of our team. So proud of our defense. That quarterback is unbelievable running the football. Congratulations, Coach. Enjoy it. Thank you. Allie, I hope you can get one of those escorts out of there because you're in a pile down there in the middle of the field. It's and with that, let's go back with the winning quarterback. Al? Jarrett, not only was this your first Iron Bowl, but you said it's the biggest game of your life. Was it everything you thought it would be? Absolutely. This is, uh, I, don't, I don't think it can get, can get much better than this in college football. This is truly unbelievable. We have the best fans in the country. And uh, we pulled out the win. On your home field, first Georgia, now Alabama. Is there something to say about the fact that this team just has ice in its veins? I think so. Uh, 
this season didn't really start off the way we wanted it to, but uh, we've, we've hit our stride at the right time, and uh, everything's in front of us. Take a second and think. A year ago, you were throwing passes at a high school practice. When you think of that, what emotions come to you? Oh, uh, man, it's uh, it's been a long ride. I, uh, I remember watching this game uh, in Houston, Texas on a couch last year, not playing at all, uh, and to now win the Iron Bowl, knock off two number one teams in three weeks, it's surreal. And uh, I just, I got to thank God. I mean, this is truly, truly unbelievable. Congratulations, Jared. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. Bye. So Auburn upsets the number one team in the country the second time this month. 26-14, the final. They go to 10-2, and, and they go to Atlanta to play Georgia. We'll wrap it up when we come back.